we have an amazing show for you today. Stay tuned, okay? Humanity, we need to hear your voices. We need to hear your voices. Hey. It's not your fault or mine, but together we can do something about it. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Voices of Humanity at PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I am your host. It's a pleasure. My name is Sandra McKechnie. And we have a beautiful guest with us today, but I wanted to just first remind you, this is fueled by double consciousness and double consciousness has everything. We go back in time into the time warp and we see where that started. It's a concept put forward by W.E.B. Du Bois, social reformer. He was the calendar boy of the NAACP for a number of years, National Association of Advancement of Colored People. And there's a lot that has to go with that. We talk a lot about implicit bias, implicit racial bias on this show a lot of amazing topics and we have some great guests for you today subscribe subscribe i would love you to get this content it changes it will it's transformational it won't happen overnight but it is transformational i have a my pleasure to introduce this wonderful lady by the name of emmalou penrod hey emmalou hello hi how are you i'm doing great i was on emmalou's show um emmalou the emmalou um Healing the Families. What's the title of the show? Healing Your Families. Healing Your Families. It was a really great opportunity. I actually spoke about, I think it was, yes, policing implicit racial bias. Um, I'm in the middle of some trainings now to double consciousness. Uh, they're called, we have a double consciousness fundamentals and a double consciousness advanced. And it's a privilege to be part of PRConnectionsRadio.com to share a lot of that, all of the intersections of that training, double consciousness. I'm also a certified life coach um, in that niche uh, through an anti-bias, anti-oppression lens. Emma Lou, I'm going to read just a little bit about our Emma Lou. I had a great time on your show and thank you again for having me. That was wonderful. Emma Lou Penrod is a wife, mother, grandmother, a retired school teacher, author of the book, Navigating the Educational System, Five Strategies to Get the Best for Your Child, and Family Life Expert with Healing Your Families. She earned a Bachelor's of Science in Elementary Education with an endorsement in Special Education from Weber State University. I hope I'm saying that right. Did. did I? Good. She did. also earned, thanks. She also earned a Master of Arts in Educational Counseling from the University of Phoenix. She is a show host with Win Win Women Network and a member of Kahata High Coaching. That was the show I was on. It was part of Win Win Women. Thank you so much, Emma Lou. Now, I, we had a great time on your show and we, 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 we kind of kept it real. And I would love you to just share a little bit more, if you can extend a little bit more in terms of family and that piece. And, and you're on double consciousness. You know, it has a lot to do with implicit bias and all of these things, right? Um, so I would love you to share a little bit more about Emma Lou. Well, thank you, Sandra. You know, the reason I wanted you to be on my show is because I feel like it's, it's very important. You know, parents teach their children by their example, by what they do, what they say, and children pick up on it very quickly. And I wanted to share that this is another aspect. We need to be careful. We need to be very thoughtful about what we're teaching our children. And I would say that before I talked to you, I considered that I was a very open-minded, non-prejudiced person. I felt like I was raised by parents who were also very unprejudiced. And I based that on the fact that I never heard them say anything negative about people of different races, cultures, religions, or anything like that. Right. And the reality is they, they were very positive people. They really didn't say anything negative about anybody. But, you know, they grew up in rural Arizona back in the 1920s and 30s. And I don't think they encountered anyone of any different race, culture. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I went to high school 
with there there were you know it was multiracial and and i remember having a discussion with my mother one time and and in my school i had friends in my classes and we would talk in class and of course there were multi races in the halls but looking back i realized they walked together in separate groups even the girls i talked to in my classes and considered friends looking back i realized i never ate lunch with them wow i never connected outside mm -hmm. of class right. and it, and i don't think i even realized that when i was in high school and I also never saw any interracial couples in my high school. Okay. And I, this is back in the 60s. And so I remember having this conversation with my mother as a teenager and just posing the hypothetical question, what would you think if I dated someone right. from a different race? Yeah. And my mother, who is a very honest woman, very genuine, very real, started out calmly saying, well, Emma Lou, I would, I would just die. I would just die. <laughs> and she got very real. And she told me that she had always been taught and believed that it just wasn't appropriate or right for races to mix socially. So and and talking with you and having you on my show i was able to realize that it's it's more than just not saying anything negative right 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 about other it's it goes much deeper and right further. so that's that's you know my story and i feel like there's you know there's a lot to think about there there is. I think I might be freezing. I hope that goes away. Who's freezing? You or me? Anyway, we'll keep going. <laughs> Something's going on. I got a brand new computer and I don't know if it's freezing or what. But anyway, Emma Lou, I thought the amazing thing um, was when you said to me, it's not that amazing, but it's that you were genuine about it. You know, that your mom could say, you know, I would just die if you married a black man. I would just die. And that's, um, and I had said to you at the time, of course, people have a choice to who they want to marry, who they want to be with, whatever environment you grow up in. But there was more to it than that. And it was, where did that come from? Sort of that visceral reaction, you know? Um, and it came through, we call it the time warp in the trainings, right? 21, 21st century, we go back in time. It's a time warp, 21st century, 20th century. You know, here we go, 19, 17, 18, back here. And there is a way, and we spoke about, um, how our, our black men are looked at as super predators re, in regards to, it was a 1954 um, prediction that was done by a gentleman from Princeton U. And he was saying that indigenous men, black men, you know, are super predators. And it was a wrong prediction. He apologized. And then that, but the poison is already sort of in, in the history, right? And even before that, of course. And then this... Uh, 1900s movie birth of a nation perpetuating the black man as a rapist and you know um and the message there was there was a woman in that movie that threw herself to her death because she saw this black man coming out of the bush of course it was a white man in black face because we didn't get those roles but the commentary was she would rather be go to her death than be raped by a black man and that wasn't even the black man's mo but I, I, I always think of what is the backstory, you know, so we can critically think. And, and you are a woman of the family, every family, all families. And I just thought that was a wonderful expression of your honesty and you, you know, just tapping into your awareness, you know. And, and you know, and, and you talk about where it came from. I also know that in the, when my parents grew up, there was still segregation. If they went, wanted to go to a movie theater, uh, my father had black curly hair and he worked in the fields all day. So he had a very deep tan mm -hmm. and he would have to show his ID to prove that he was Caucasian to get into wow. the movie theater. So there was, there was that culture too, that they had not totally eliminated segregation. Right. And, and even after, even after they did, 
again, thinking I grew up in an enlightened age. I was taught to value all people and, and really thought <laughs> that's what I did. Right. So, yes, yes. I think that's, you know what? That's the truth. Uh, that's the crux of it. Um, when people start to think, you know what? Oh my gosh, I'm tapping into my conscious unawareness first. We, we, that's kind of the first state. And just kind of thinking, you know what? I, I don't know. I'm not aware of some stuff. That's a wonderful place to be. You know, I'm aware of my unawareness. And I think that's perfect. And I was saying to you, if we can move from the I or you, I, um, and we move to the we and the hour, then we can that we can have a wonderful collaboration. And, and to be honest, it's a systemic thing, 21st century, 20, 19, 18, 17, that we're fighting. And some people say, forget about the past. Well, no, that has determined how we are responding today, right? That has come with us through the time warp. We've passed it on in a multi-generational way. And I was thinking how, like even in, um, in terms of the family and your show, is there something that some other way you might like to implement? Is there, um, do you have indigenous brothers and sisters on the show? Is, you know, is there different things you would like to think of or guests going forward? Yes, yes. And, and I do try to select from a variety. I, I, I think of it too, I, I use a lot of stock photos of families and I mm -hmm. want to include every culture, every race and yeah, I think we can definitely do that. But I also, I think it's important to send messages to parents that, you know, children watch parents very closely. Mm. And even if parents feel like, well, I don't ever say anything bad about another race, I don't. But there's those subtle cues that children pick up and, and parents need to be aware Absolutely. of how closely their children and then like you said, as they become more aware of what they're not aware of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. True. Very, very true. And, and I'm, I've had to learn, uh, you know, I, I didn't just come here, you know, show up uh, doing this. I was very much, I was sleeping for a long time. And then I recognized, you know, there's so much, there's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of blame. And one thing we tout in double consciousness is um, it's not my fault or yours, Emily. It is not my fault or yours or Emma Lou's, but together we can do something about it. And when I coach in that niche, that anti-bias, anti-oppression sort of niche, and I, I have a, a lady specifically that I'm with now holding space with, that is going through some horrible implicit racial bias on her job. And even in the trainings, we discuss what that looks like. And we have white people calling out whiteness and people get offended by that sometimes, but these are people that really want to make a difference, you know, and I, I really know that you do too. And I really respect that and your genuineness in telling us your story. All it says is your mom stuff was passed to her and inadvertently it will be passed on. Um, I'm going to put my, let me put my, there we go. I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just keeping it real. I got to plug in my computer. <laughs> so the other thing is, and I was thinking how amazing this, this was when I, when I, I'm reading a book now, give it a minute. There we go. I'm reading a book now called, um, what white people can do next. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, but it's by Emma DeBerry. Amazing book. And you know, one thing that she's, I'm alluding to it, I won't quote her, but is that you can actually have, we can have, um, we can think another group is inferior and still be committed to protecting them or doing what's right by them, which is kind of, it's like a powerful dawning that, you know, that you could actually think someone's inferior and still be committed to. And, and maybe that's the case until people learn more, you know, and grow and change. How does that sit with you hearing that? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is think someone else is inferior. And I, mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. Okay. I, my experience has been every person I have met okay. has something to teach me. And as a school teacher, when I worked with students with special needs, I had students who had a very low, okay, very low IQ, were struggling with social skills. Right. And yet they had worth. They still had something to teach me. 
Wonderful. And so I think if we ever catch ourselves thinking some other group is inferior, we need to re we need to revisit that. Yes, me, absolutely. That is not accurate. Every human being mm -hmm. has value, and every human being should be get allowed to become the best that they can be. Mm. You know, I, I travel through um, south of us is Arizona, and I travel one road we take goes through uh, a reservation. Right, and right. you see these out in the desert, these very skimpy shelters, people living in severe poverty in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I, why, you know, and you, you have to ask yourself, why did they really choose this? Do they not, have they not been allowed to feel that they can mm -hmm. have something else? So mm -hmm. I think there's a real problem if we ever start to feel that another group is inferior, whether it's a, and the political parties do this. Uh -huh, <laughs> uh -huh. They'll name call and no, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When they think differently, have a different opinion. But so I, I was thinking how, because even if it's, again, that could be an implicit thing that comes out in people. You might not, nobody wants to walk around thinking, I think that group's inferior and that group is inferior. But implicit, I see what you're saying. But it may yeah. come out yeah. in, um, I mean, she's called it because people may end up feeling dehumanized or, in, you know, or inferior, depending on how the so-called dominant, if someone is dom the dominant group or those that have benefited in terms of the system and the um, systemic racism, structural racism, depending on what happens when you, because it happens a lot in the corporate world, C-suite, it happens with people that are busy, they don't have the time and they unintentionally, um, unconsciously let this stuff, you know, seep out. <laughs> And you actually can feel it. It's a hard, it's a terrible feeling. The indigenous people feel it a lot, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's something I think probably your show and shows like yours, shows like this and so many beautiful shows out here um, can be a real catalyst to, for people like yourself to come on that are genuinely wanting change, you know, yeah. and genuinely wanting to speak to it and being honest about um, tapping into things that they're unaware about, that they're yeah. unaware about their unawareness to start and then moving on to, you know, conscious awareness where you're getting a little bit more aware, you know. And you're right. You're right. It's, it's very easy to say, you know, we're all equal, but it does slip in if you're somewhere in public and maybe you see someone shabbily dressed. And maybe there is that, you know, and you avert your eyes or, you know, yes, you're right. Right. it is implicit, you know, and on the, yeah, on that conscious level, we would say, oh, I, I love everyone. I'm accepting of everyone. And yet, if we're being honest. For sure. I've done it. Are, are there groups that and, we ignore? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or we walk by before before yeah. I grew up. I tell people, you know, I'd walk by, see somebody, I'm like, oh gosh, no, I don't want to look. I gotta go, you know. And now I really, because I want that inner change. If someone is there, indigent or whatever the situation is, even if I am not giving anything, I need to tap into that for just a second, you know, and acknowledge that. What is that? Well, what am I feeling? Yes, now? and I'm thinking just make eye contact just acknowledge Beautiful. them as a fellow human being absolutely i think that that goes a long way just being true. acknowledged mm. so how often is your show oh it's weekly it's every wednesday okay okay and you are going to send me all of your information about that show so that i can put it when we kick it out that everybody can have that i'm happy to do that and so what is your, what are your, or do you have any more plans for the show? For, for my show? Yes. Where it's well, going to go. I'm, I want to present all areas of parenting and, you know, parenting styles, different challenges mm. in parenting, unique situations. And, and that, and why I wanted you on my show 
and and it's just being aware of how they can be more effective and and i also tell parents when you become a better person you become a better parent so the more they can avail themselves of programs like yours anything that builds confidence personal development learning emotional intelligence uh -huh. that yes, yes. towards I making them a better parent and overall, how would you say double consciousness, that whole concept has helped you um, implicit the outside of how will that help your show oh, in a nutshell? That has given me a, 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 a much greater depth to go into in considering just what are we teaching our children. Now, imagine the world if all parents had this awareness hmm. and were raising their children you know, yeah. just, just because the parents think that way, it will be passed on to their children. So you know what? Uh, and, and unintentionally, you don't even think, no, I didn't do that. Yeah. I didn't say that. But kind My of mother never that, intended right? to pass on any. True. But she did. Very true. Very true. Very true. And, and you know, and she was a good, good, kind hearted, loving person. I absolutely believe you. Yes. But unaware. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you, Emma Lou. <laughs> and Thank we, you, Sandra. We absolutely will be in touch because I think it's really important stuff. And I'd love, it's the action that I think people are uh, really wanting to look into to the movement of doing um, and calling out their own whiteness, whatever that looks like. When we say that, because you know, this was not about white or black. <laughs> this was about nations. This was not about, you know, that was constructed. And when people say call out whiteness, they're talking about the acknowledgement of, okay, yes, what concessions can I make if someone is going through A, B, or C? And I know that I may not have that level of intergenerational, multi-generational stress or internalized oppression as a person or as a group, you know. So looking at that sort of thing. Um, so I'm so glad that you have actually been been it's been a somehow it's made a it's been helpful and inspiring to you thank you I for joining me i love the word awareness and thank you for what you're doing thank you thank for you me. emma we will be in touch this was great and we have a little bit of a commercial for you and we'll be right back thank you Hi there, I'm Sandra McKechnie from Double Consciousness. Double Consciousness looks like this, cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness trainings. I've been doing it for four years. We're going into our fifth year or 41st time on Zoom and we're doing it. Would love you to join us. The next thing that I do is I'm a certified life coach holding space for clients in the areas of cultural awareness and sensitivity, right? So people that may have a challenge and they just want some space, a consultation, coaching opportunity to unpack implicit racial bias. Everybody's welcome and we would love to have you in the trainings or book a, con a consultation. And We have a free opportunity, 15 minutes if you want to have a chat and get to know me and find out where you fit in that. Um, the next thing that I do is I am a host for Voices of Humanity out of prconnectionsradio.com. Um, if you want to be on my podcast and you're a fit because it does have to fit with the show, um, has to complement the show, and the network i would love you to get in touch with me and i'm also from my heart and i've always been a singer songwriter and i love this stuff i love the singing we put it in our trainings our cultural sensitivity and awareness trainings so sometimes i just sing just like this you you're all that i want you are all that i need and you brought me here when I can't find my way. You're all that I need. And you brought me here to pray. You should hear that with my keyboard player, it's to live for. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that helps you to know who Sandra McKechnie is. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs> hey, how are you, Sandra? Where did he go? <laughs> he was having some some connection problems, so he left 
the backstage and he's going to come back. So I figured I'd come here and talk with you for a few minutes. You can interview me and maybe he'll be able to come back and be connected. Hey, so what did you think about Emma Lou? Was that a good show? <laughs> I thought she actually, I thought she did an outstanding job. Yes, I really did. Perspectives. And you know what I really appreciated about her, the interview, Sandra, was yeah. how, how open she was mm. about her, her, her situation with her parents. and Absolutely. Uh, I yeah. loved it. I just thought when I was on her show, um, that was one of the things. And it just came out of nowhere. Like she's just that, uh, you know. And she said it was visceral. Like she just said, you know, my mom said I, she'd die. She was more visceral then. I think because she's on a, she's being interviewed. As, you know, we get a little more starchy. We try to keep things together a little more, but she's great. And she's really been affected um, by what I do and what's important because she's dealing with families. That's her heartbeat, you know? Yeah, so, I think it's so important, you know, with risk, with, uh, with issues related to race specifically, yeah. because I think people have a tendency to, it's it's a very touchy, delicate subject I that know. people have lots of different opinions about and lots of perspectives about. And I think a lot of times people won't want to, they re just rather not address it. I hear you. Even though <laughs> that's not necessarily the way to right. change it's not maybe it, the best. it's yes. much easier yes. to kind of tiptoe around it. And, you know, I think that some of these, uh, these situations and circumstances are best addressed. I think so. Like, I mean, if, if you have, I think if you have the information and you understand that it's not about white and black, that it is about us, it's not about fault right now. Let's see if we can collaborate and do something about it and pass on the right things to our children. You know, that would be great, I think, <laughs> you know, as hard as it is. Um, I'm doing a training right now that, you know, these people online are calling our calling out whiteness, calling out the system, the structure, the construct and saying, you know what? Yeah, it's, I need to think about if I need to count to 10 before, even if I make a disciplinary action or I write somebody up for something at work or what does that look like? You know, our bias is involved and what am I doing that for? You know, and actually this Bernard Mills was coming on to talk about that whole thing and the uh, recidivism, people returning, why do they return all the time like this? And the, the stats say that, oh my gosh, blacks, it's still the same. You know, it's come from the system and structures that were set up, droves of black men being um, taken off the street between emancipation and the second world war for rape and all kinds of, <laughs> I don't know, looking at a white woman the wrong way and all sorts of things. So stealing a pig for a dollar. And now today it's not that. It would be uh, you just, you have a, your car is too nice. You know, <laughs> what are you doing to get that car? <laughs> just pulling people over for, I don't know. I don't like the your windows are too tinted. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've had conversations with people, Sandra, related to things like you were sort of touching on racial profiling just a profiling, second ago. Totally. And, I, you know, I think that racial things operate so unconsciously yes it's that a lot of times people don't even realize if you're not standing up screaming about things that that doesn't mean that you're not experiencing these things so i've had conversations with people where i've told them about experiences i've had with racial profiling Wow. And they were really shocked to hear that I had had those experiences. Yeah, not you, Guy. You're too nice. It's not right. right? <laughs> just because I just don't, I don't make it, you know, I don't use that as a, that's just not something that I spend a lot of time on because I got other folks, right? Do, not that yes. it's not something that's, that's wrong and that shouldn't be happening, but because I don't tend to, a lot of times just, I'll have me in a, having relationships with people who are white, but that's not the first thing that I'm going to bring up is the fact that the cops pulled me over in a white neighborhood when I was absolutely. sitting in my car doing absolutely nothing absolutely and, not. and made me leave the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, but that's just not, that's not the biggest part of the conversation that I have with them. And I think sometimes white people just assume that if you're not talking about it, it must not be happening to you. So this is very true. there's just this so many levels true. when it comes to 
race relations are just so interesting. Uh, it, it, no, it, <laughs> they it are really so, is. so and, interesting. And here is Emma Lou, who's got a loving mother. How many people do I know in my life like that that are white? They have nice parents. They will treat me well. I've got four godsons there. One of the, one of the, their sisters, my goddaughter, but I you have to claim them all, you know. So here they are. They're white. And it's like, you know, we've got black friends. We're good, auntie, you know. So it's by proximity for them, right? So they can't concede that. <laughs> because their black friends don't don't bring anything to them like that they don't go down there with them you know so they don't really feel anything's wrong but it doesn't mean their black friends are not experiencing stuff right and just yeah. filing it filing it in the filing system right right it can be a real eye opener when you share some experiences that you've had and then they say i had no idea that this was right as if i guess that that should have been a topic. But again, a lot of times you just, you know, there's so many other things are happening in your life. It's not necessarily the topic that you want to bring up when you get together. Oh my uh, goodness, for your, sure. With your you friends, know, whoever they are. Takes but, a lot of energy. <laughs> that definitely does not mean that you're not experiencing. <laughs> it's so true. And you don't, you don't get a lot of support that way. I have a white sister girl, blonde here. I always joke about her. She's wonderful. And we have a great relationship. And you know, I have a couple more, but they're not really, it's hard for them. One of them can't even address it. She's like, okay, I feel like I have to apologize to all the black people in the world. It's too much. She can't even come to a training. So we have to still love each other if, because we're all mixed up in our families with this. So yeah, yeah, that's not what it's all about. You know, that's, yeah. yeah, it's not about apologies, but it's also not about not acknowledging. Yes. So that yes. people are comfortable. So I'm going to pull myself out because it looks like he's back. I hope you recorded this. This is a show too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bernard. Oh boy. All you right, know, I guess he's not bad. I think I think it might be his system. You know why I froze? And I'm so sorry I froze at the beginning. I don't know if you can cut that out or something. But I don't know. But I was out running out of juice and I didn't even know it wasn't plugged in. So it was fighting with everybody. What's wrong with you? So of course I had to plug it. <laughs> can you still glean from that, from what we did with Emma Lou? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, we're okay. still live on uh, Facebook. Okay. We have viewers out there. So hey everybody, you're great. Yeah. People. Thank you for your patience. You guys are Yeah, great. this is uh, the okay. streaming world. These are some of the some of the adaptions that we have to make sometimes right? in this That's okay. In the streaming world. You I I you better keep our content. I like our conversation. That was great too. <laughs> <laughs> stick that up <laughs> right yeah i mean i just i so appreciate what you've been doing on uh, here on the network with this uh with this concept of double consciousness that i had never really even heard of before although i, I understand either. the double consciousness i mean yeah. i really i really understand the fact that um i was told many many years ago that yeah for being a, a black person in america me being from america is that and i think this is from w be the boys, the boys yeah. about having two faces yes and this and is the that, veil isn't that awesome this is the veil and that you yeah to operate in in america black people have unconsciously learned how to take on uh two perspectives right two Absolute, ways two that they approach the world two social two identities. Thought. Absolutely. and i mean most people uh that i see who are black they they absolutely have experienced that in their lives. I know I have. And again, it's so natural because you just do it your whole life. You know that you have to function in a society that is very different maybe than your, um, your black perspective. Mm -hmm. but what do you that, mean your black perspective? Oh, I see what I'm, you mean. Yes, that you kind of have to code switch. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. There's a five five. because you know really and and I, people always get upset about that somebody I, I heard i saw a video somebody was so upset at somebody oh you're just acting white in the week at work and then you're acting black on the in the weekend with your people and i'm like who cares the point is we were assimilated on so many levels to that white is right brown stick around and black get back i don't care where you go just get black back so i feel we should give each other a break if i i showed up so white my family used to let me talk to people if it, my mother was in the hospital they say let sandra talk to them she knows how to talk to them <laughs> 
know, because of the way I showed up. And I find it so hilarious, right? But it's the truth. There are certain ways I was assimilated to present myself with the so-called dominant group. So I do it. But when I woke up and started listening to Pete, to um, W. E. B. Du Bois's writings, a lady by Dr. Joy DeGru, who's out here doing her wonderful work, sociologists, and listening to trauma specialists and people that have skin in this game, I'm, I'm amazed um, at how much it changed my life. And I understood it and I accept it. And it's like every day, guy, I get up and, you know, sort of unconsciously, I say, I'm, my name's Sandra McKechnie and I'm challenged with double consciousness. Yeah, right? <laughs> Right. Because even I go to my um, I go to uh, Hamilton There's a place here in Ontario and I will go my auntie. Say I go there. I haven't been in years, but you go to auntie. Auntie just talk like this. She just talk like a real vision. And so when you go to auntie's house, I end up you end up auntie. I'm starting to talk like auntie because that's our people. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Or my mom or my dad. The moment I get in my house, it's not as bad as auntie, but because my, but my dad still has a thick Bayesian accent. So you do, you have your ethnicity, your people, and then here, I'm on the show. I, I don't, right? If I came on here doing, guy, what happened to Bernard? He gone? You know, like, <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be like, I don't think they can understand. You better stop that. But this is part of who we are and we adapt. We are, we do have two streams of thought, two social identities. And right. we want and to the, close that gap. We're trying. And the judgment, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges, Sandra, is when people get in judgment about it on any level. So yeah. it could be it could be black people being in judgment of the fact that you are assimilating, like you had mentioned. And sometimes you can get a lot of negativity from black people oh, gosh, about yes. the fact that you are assimilating. So there's a judgment that, that they're making about that, right? Totally. Then sometimes you can get judgment from white people about the fact, why aren't you acting black? Why oh. are you trying to act why? Lord of mercy, I got a story. Mm-mm. So this, this is, is so some true. of the frank type of talk that needs so to sometimes, true. right, needs so to be true. discussed. And me being a PR and marketing person, you know, <laughs> I, this is kind of out of my, but, uh, you know, again, I'm just so inspired by what your show is is talking about and you addressing these issues and, and being a lot more frank than, um, and I, and with the people that you you talk to and the experiences that you share. And I think, yes, yeah, it's uh, being worried about how people are going to be offended by what you say. Uh, Sometimes that can be a real block for uh, for progress. As we had as our president that we just had, where everybody talked about how important it was to express yourself as he (laughs) he was very open, at least in America, we had a president who was very open about his expression. And there were people who would just cheer, cheer, cheer about how open he was with his expression. Right. And so I feel that we need to be accepting of that on all levels. If, yes. if Donald Trump should express himself hey. and his follow- followers should express themselves, why should other people not be, it shouldn't be cheered that other people are expressing their dis, um, displeasure with things or their uh, opinions about things. And Absolutely. so it's a judgment, Absolutely. you know, hey, Take a position, but judgment, the judgment is part of the problem. If you're going to have freedom of speech, like, I mean, that's a really big thing in America anyway. Freedom of speech for your side is great. Mm. (laughs) But when the other side wants to speak out, then you're against it. That's some of the the challenges uh, that I see with communication as it relates to race. Absolutely. Everybody, this is the gentleman. I was being interviewed on his platform by the beautiful Desiree. And he came backstage and he said to me, you'd be good at this, Sandra. You would be good at this. All right. So I thought, oh, yeah, okay. I know I'd be good at it. Okay. <laughs> I needed a minute. It was kind of starchy moving out of the gate, but it, it is. <laughs> Now I'm here. I'm me. Oh my goodness. I think it's a great opportunity guy for people to just also just delve into those intersections of double consciousness, you know, and, and we have a lady that's going to come on from uh, India 
and she really wants to talk about the treatment of our people in India, south there, where our women, the women are tr treated deplorably. Like that's such a heavy burden on her heart, you know, um, same people, but you know, one will from the north that people will call them like dirty South Indians, this, this sort of, this horrible kind of treatment. So that's her passion. And of course we had Sandy Boucher, I don't remember her, the expert on uh, conciliation for the indigenous people. And she wants to come back and just, we have to do a screen share that time because she wants to really get into some stuff, you know, uh, just a sort of a teaching and training that hour. And I look forward to that. There's, so there's some crunchy little bits, little prickly little bits coming. And I don't know if you remember um, Fanella. She's the lady, Fanella Trevilian. I don't know if you were at that show. Maybe you were. Um, she did a, we did a show on, yes, yeah, you were, you did. Uh, she was the lady that grew up in South Africa apartheid. Oh yeah, oh, she's yeah. wonderful. Isn't she great? Yeah, wonderful. Story. Yeah. So she's going to come back just to, we, we want all the voices, voices. And because it's a video podcast, it kind of, you get to see the faces. So I can't fake it. <laughs> You can't fake it and bring on <laughs> people are going to see people. So yeah, I hope again, it's going your, your well. Your topics are so empowering, Sandra, uh, on a lot of levels. And yeah. again, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about your evolution growing as a podcaster and, uh, and dealing Thank with you. these topics that you're taking on is that you, uh, you're you very much about letting the guests be heard. And, and, you know, I think that that's a real skill for an interviewer is that, the you know, that the, um, the interview is about the guest. And that's a skill that not all people get in, in my, I mean, I've been in broadcasting a decade and, wow. you know, done my own shows, produced that's lots awesome of shows, of your shows. Good and show. I'm producing shows. But in my perspective, again, seeing so many people do this, I just love the way that you let your guests be heard. You understand that, of course, you're the star, you're the podcaster, you're the one who's doing the show, but their content is what really yes. makes the show. And you yes. seem to like intuitively have gotten that very early on. And not all people who do podcasts really understand that, that it's the, sh the show, the flow of the show is about the guests. It's really not about the interviewer. Although the interviewer is the central figure in the right, show. what a dichotomy! It is it's a, a fine, fine line. Yeah, I'm right. I'm saying too much, and yeah, that's so true. And I'm trying to be mindful of it. Some things I have to say a little more just to get the question so it makes sense, so they can deliver on the content. I, you know, <laughs> you know that dance, right? It's like a waltz. <laughs> yes. You have to prepare people. You have to position people to be able to give great answers and that's that's a skill it really is to get them to open up and really share with you it's an art it's an art to know how to ask questions and then enable position your guests to be able to answer them and really be able to express themselves i was looking at a couple of your shows online you got the nice furniture wow <laughs> was that through classy communications as well well yes i've done tv shows on Nice. Lots of different networks. And um, what we've done here with PR Connections Radio is streaming has just become such a popular platform. And after many, many years of doing AM radio, FM radio, doing TV shows, internet TV shows, a few years ago, I just decided that I wanted to create a platform that would allow people like you to be able to uh, become leaders through podcasting wow. by sharing these these messages about all all types of different topics and wow. and that video the video streaming platform has become so uh, so popular with people this is how people get their information now yes yes so so guy where can i put it up the audio can we put it up somewhere just to if i see a free spot i could check with you i don't know am i permitted to do that put the audio up yes actually or? we have a soundcloud account for the network for ah. pr connections radio.com you'll see in the banner okay where they actually the audio yeah. versions of this show are on soundcloud and we've got a lot of things in the works right now okay. where we're going to be able to hear these on uh apple spotify yeah. really we got a whole lot of things in development on the okay. audio side. Okay. But just because video is so popular and um, it's just great how social media has really opened up the doors and allowed you to be able to do a lot with streaming and sharing. Uh, I just, uh, back in 2020, 
I made this decision that I wanted to bring this uh, this platform to this uh, stage. And then over the last couple of years, it's sort of evolved and we're getting more and more shows uh, that are coming to the network. And yeah, this is this is the future of media is what yeah, we're doing now. It's yeah. about real people telling real stories. People just love it. They just love to hear real stories from real people. Not that they don't enjoy celebrities. Of course, you know, everyone enjoys celebrity stories, but there's a place for people who may not be celebrities who have amazing stories to share. And that's what podcasters like you do with these, well, with these shows on the network. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm constantly just sort of vetting people that will come and really be authentic and just be honest about some stuff. I met a 20 year old the other day, a blonde white boy, you know, just so polite and caring. And he was on the, he met me on, you know, you do a little, um, we had a little virtual tea and, um, he is an ad, you know, he's an, uh, um, he's doing this work. I couldn't even believe it. He's an activist. Um, he said, it's not, he said, I don't know about a passion for it or anything, but I know it's wrong. It's wrong. And we, you know, I thought, good, <laughs> this is all good. You know, you know, it's wrong. That's good enough for me. Let's go. So I'm looking at having him on just to open this up to young people that they, you know, they also can come and um, maybe at that point they can look at stuff, tap into their, that they may be unaware about some stuff, you know. And the perspectives, you yes. know, Sandra, yes. it's really just about what can be learned from a perspective. It's not for me, it's not so much about right or wrong. I mean, we have your, you have a perspective. We have a show on this network called We Have the Power. Which is a very, very different perspective. Brian Gardner is a, a wonderful podcaster who comes very right wing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, you told me, me about him. <laughs> I'm all about the discussion. Yes, for sure. Different for perspectives sure. Because I think that there are things to be learned when you just tune out another perspective. You tune out the ability to be able to get something. There's nuggets in everything, and that's there is what, what this network is all about. It's about <laughs> it is about truly being able to share different points of view in your box, which is your show, and to have them be validated uh, by people who are interested. And so I know that everything is not for everyone, but sure, I do believe sure, that sure. people should have the opportunity. Now I'm not talking about destruction. I'm not talking about. <laughs> Tearing groups, right? Tearing people down and tear. I'm not talking about that type of thing. <laughs> I'm talking about constructive dialogue. You're not talking about me getting vexed and going, I'm out of here and shutting down the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of things going on on the internet, you know, and I mean, again, I, it's not for me to judge what's happening. I mean, there's something for everyone, but for sure, specifically for sure. with this network, it's really about diverse opinions, diverse yes. ideas. Yes. And that there's a place for it. And if you don't believe in it, you don't have to watch it. True. And if you want to take sure. a look at another perspective, great. Take a look Definitely. at it. There might be something that you're going to be able to gain from that. Maybe there Definitely. won't. But either way, I'm all about the dialogue. Oh, and yeah. That's what the, the, this network represents. Even with this show, I'll say to people when we meet, because I always meet with people first. So I just have more connectivity when we're on the air. But um. You know, I'll say you might not agree with me on something and I might not agree with you. You know, I don't want to spend the whole show disagreeing, but I certainly, if you, <laughs> if you, <laughs> I'm going to do me anyway. But just if there's something that we just don't agree on, that you have a different perspective, we come with it and we still can have that respect and have a great show. Absolutely. And again, agree, agreeing to disagree, that doesn't, uh, I've learned so many things from people who I have vehemently disagreed with. <laughs> I mean, but just, you know what I mean? My perspective was mm -hmm. so opposed to their perspective at the time yeah. when we were in the disagreement. Right. But because we had the disagreement, I had to hear what they had to say. And, you know, on down the line, as I thought about their point of view, it dr has dramatically changed my perspective on whether they were right or wrong. It's given me a whole point of view that was much different 
than what I might have been thinking, right? I, we can get very locked in on our opinion is so right. True. And that's, so true. And that's, so that's true. part of the problem is that it's so easy as people, myself included, by the way. Oh, yeah, me too. Very, very you. locked yeah. into what we believe to be right. Or, that's why religion and politics and things are very difficult yes, subjects for people I know. to address because yeah. we get very, very locked into our, our thinking, our way of thinking is right. And again, everyone's free to be that way too. For sure. So this sure. network is all about, you've got a choice. Mm. The perspectives are here. Take what you like and leave the rest. That's true. No, I totally agree. Even, even when I do my trainings, there's people I had to listen to that I might be like, no, I don't agree. But I needed to listen to them to know I didn't agree, you know? <laughs> Yes. Like I want to hear it. And this, we had a gentleman on last week, Derek Brown. Great, great guest. Um, he has a podcast called uh, Etching the Edges. Love that. And he was talking about critical thinking, getting as much information as you can. And then so you can really have some critical thinking around your perspectives even. And I love that. I love even looking at debunking things I really believe or I, you know, holding on to. And so it can give you a really solid foundation in terms of awareness, I think. You yes. Know? I mean, I really, again, I enjoy Sandra, the thinking, like you talked about the fact that you are by addressing these topics in an intelligent way that you're creating a platform to get people to think, not necessarily agree. True enough. <laughs> because that's a difficult <laughs> Oh my a goodness. very difficult thing for people. To very do. true. Like just to at least think. Yeah. We need more thinking in this world. <laughs> yeah. In my yeah. opinion. More for sure. Thinking. And we're creating more. thinkers every day. So even passing things on, people might be very influenced by your show, your network, and that might help them to really start thinking. Um you know, using their brain and studying so that they can have the information and then make their own decision on a lot of topics. So I love shows like these. I got to look at some of these other shows. I've dropped in to the two gentlemen that are there. Um, the two gentlemen, what is that show called? The two black guys that are on. Oh, now. Defenders of Finance. Okay. Yeah. They're, yeah, I think that's neat. Yeah. There you Both go. Of those guys are some really sharp financial guys. Mm. Very, very sharp. One is a loan officer and the other is a financial advisor. And they give some excellent information on that network. Very, I mean, on that show, very basic information uh, that can be extremely helpful for you uh, I must tap well, into when that. it comes to your finances. You've got a whole mortgage board going on and over we've here. We've got a sports show called The Sports Angle with Ian Rochelle. Yes. He's a young guy who's really into sports. Yes, he's, he's very passionate. Very knowledgeable about sports. And his wow. actually his podcast is at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time this evening. Wow. Um, and so those are two of our newer shows. We have The Love of Business with uh, Miko Faith. Oh, I love me, Miko. Very she's, good friends with. she's coming on the show. I just yeah, think it's going to be The Love of great. Business is all about your business. Uh, yeah. Why you love what you do and uh, other shows in the works as we've got. So listen to this one, Sandra. We've got Millennials and Politics Whoa. is one of the shows that we're developing right now. And we're going to have a blue edition and a red edition. Have mercy. <laughs> so we have to separate. Initially, I wanted to put them together, but like I said, politics, no way, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the two shows. There will be a Democrat edition and a Republican edition. So they can all come on and espouse their views from their collective or their individual parties. And from there, the one way we're going to bridge the two is we're going to do um, Millennials in Politics, the Debate. So oh. we will create an actual podcast where we will bring the red show and the and the blue show together, and then edit and debate. Oh, together on one show for one show, not very often. <laughs> that would be <laughs> amazing. Again, you, that okay, takes that's away from the, interesting. But that's you let that's me know a show about that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested. I really would love to see the conversation mm -hmm. behind that and how yeah. it's approached. 
Good stuff yeah. happening at PR. Hey, thanks for the website. <laughs> yes, our, our website is live. We were Very down for quite you. a while. Thank for thank you so much, Sandra, for your patience and your prodding as we were moving towards the. I was trying to be diplomatic. The re-release of <laughs> our website, nice. but we've got a lot of development Good. still to do on it. Sure. However, but at least PR Connections Radio.com is live. You can go over there. Uh, and watch a uh, podcast that we have is that we've got a big blog area that we're going to really be developing over the next couple of months. Blog. We're always looking for contributors to our blogs. Oh, really? Where you will be able to submit actual blogs related to topics uh, that we, the shows that are covered on, on our network. We're going to have all types of written content as well oh, on that website, articles on. and things that be, including you, if you wanted to contribute content. Oh, I do. It. But yes. do other people want, do other people outside or just people of the, in the network can contribute to them? Not blog? necessarily just in the network, just as long as it's congruent with thinking and okay. the types of ideas that we have on all these shows. We're definitely oh. looking for people who want to participate in that as well. So when can I start that? That's going to, that's in the works. That's great. Yes. You can start writing whenever you're ready because we're going to be developing the blog side very, very soon. Okay. I like that because I have it up on another network, a network called Media, my blogging in terms of uh, mm -hmm. my, from my website. That's great. Well, you're doing some stuff there. Yeah, and nice, so nice are you, Sandra. Nice and I, it, you know, who knows? I guess I was meant to come on and talk about some of these things. I, you know what? I just think Father knows all. Look at this. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> I know. I'm Bernard's supposed to be here. I'm forever amazed at how life works sometimes. You know, I'm always grateful because <laughs> here's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that is so hilarious. What are you doing here? It's supposed to be Bernard, but. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to get him sorted out with a system that's really i think it's probably the system he's using i suspect you know <laughs> yeah. something's off and um but i got a brand new system guy so it's only because i only froze because i didn't have it plugged in it should work when it's plugged in it was just losing juice but i have we didn't have any trouble ask miko the last couple of times right yeah the internet can be interesting yeah, you know, definitely. It's probably he just had a bad connection and, yeah, and that, you never know when it, you know, we try to do our best to manage it. That's why I was trying to wait. And sometimes it'll, it'll pass. It'll come, yeah, yeah. It just didn't seem like it was happening uh, for him today. I know we did. That's okay. That's okay. We still got a show. Yes, we did. <laughs> hey everybody. We got a show. I'm so glad. I like when it's natural like this. It's <laughs> yeah. good. It's good to be here with you be a part of this. It's like a movement. Yes, absolutely. And again, Sandra, I just, I want to, I can't overemphasize. You've just taken this whole concept of voices of humanity. I told you what the topic was and then you just ran with it. And Yay. you're, I mean, everything that you're doing is so in alignment with, with it. We have a, a group that I share your shows in called Empowering Humanity. Ooh. It's a, a group that I'm a part of. Nice. And they are just so appreciative of your shows. I get such great feedback from them about the topics that you're discussing. And they've they've consciously come to me and said, she's just, she's wonderful. We just love the shows that she's doing. Really? Oh, that feedback's so nice. Make sure they subscribe. It's about Voices of Humanity. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that I send them a link so they can subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Guy. I think we did great. Yes, we did. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Guy Dawson. <laughs> Ah, this was nice. All right. You ready to go into your soft out? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm getting too relaxed over here. It's a show. Come on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Humanity, we need to hear your voices. We need to hear. Hey, yay! <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. This has been great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself for some reason. <laughs> I appreciated it. Voices of Humanity. I am your host, Sandra McKechnie at PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. And we're doing it. Thank you for joining us today. And thank Guy 
for joining us today. And Emma Lou Penrod was here with us and we've had a good show. I hope you enjoy the information and the content. Double Consciousness, please could subscribe to Voices of Humanity at prconnectionsradio.com, the voice of new media. We'd love it. And you can go on the website too. All right. Thank you so much. Subscribe, subscribe. Thank you. We value you. Thank you so much. Bye for now.